Hello there, one thing that's an absolute certainty is that video game players cannot get enough ways to customise their characters, and it's no different for those of us who play World of Warcraft. Whenever the developers release some new character customizations, our response as players is never GG developers, instead it's invariably, is that all? Since the launch of World of Warcraft back in 2004, we've gone from a handful of options in the character creation screen to a wide array of in-game options to customise our character's look, but at the same time it's not unfair to say that the game hasn't been keeping up with some of its competitors. In this video I thought it'd be fun to run through a bunch of options that could be added to World of Warcraft to meaningfully expand the options we have as a player to customise our characters in other parts of the game. Now some of what I'm going to suggest are likely to not be possible with the current game engine's limitations, but you know what? That engine is just software and it can be changed given enough time and resources. So let's not be limited by that and let's take a look at what could be added if the team had the infinite time and resources they needed to really stretch things out. At number 10, we have body types. Currently in World of Warcraft, we're limited to two body types, male and female. Now, whenever the question of why male players choose female characters in WoW, the most common answer is that the male body types are just too beefy. And you know what? I definitely agree with this, especially for the human males who invariably are built like world's strongest man competitors with bizarrely long and bulky forearms. Compare that to the female models which have much more realistic, albeit athletic, frames. Of course, we do have Kul Tiran humans which now do offer less fit body types for humans, but that involves making changes to ratios, home cities, and all the other stuff that comes with a race change, so that's not really a full solution. A couple of years ago, Blizzard changed the body types for male versus female to type 1 and type 2, and this does open up the option for other types such as a skinny human model, short models, tall models, and the like. I'd certainly like options for perhaps a more toned muscular male model, for example, such as the ones you can get in Diablo. Now, whenever the question of body types comes up, the idea of sliders also comes to the mind. I'd certainly love the idea of height sliders and perhaps body tone and weight sliders too. At number 9, we have earnable body decorations. While some races do have options for tattoos and jewellery, these are mostly limited to a fixed set for a given race and they aren't really consistent across races. Why would a human druid not fancy some night elf face markings, or perhaps a dwarf paladin not want some of the Lightforge Draenei tattoos? Or maybe a Draenei would want to head down to the auction house and get themselves a new tailband? While there are some character customizations that make sense to be baseline for a given race, for artificial decorations I feel it would make more sense for these to be add-ons that we could earn in-game. The examples of the sort of things you could do there could be body paints, makeups, tanning sessions, jewellery and of course tattoos. At number 8 we have dyes and tints. Dyes and tints have become staples of some more modern MMOs and similar games. The idea basically is if you don't like the colour of a transmog piece but you like its style, you can easily change that colour. Now I don't know about you but there's been loads of time when I've been picking out a transmog piece to complete a look only to find that it's not quite the right shade of green to fit. And that's what I mean with a tint. A dye will change the colour completely while tints will darken or lighten existing shades. The cool thing about this in game is it could easily become a new profession. Perhaps, for example, we'd need dye makers to buy our dyes from and could they also then go on to sell hair dyes and mount dyes? Number seven is individual spell changes. But wait, what? Don't we already have glyphs? Well, sure we do, but let's be honest, cosmetic glyphs are super inconsistent between classes. Some classes have some super cool options for the more unique abilities, while others just feel kind of generic to me. Now, personally, I'd love to see a fresh pass over glyphs to significantly extend the range of options that are available, particularly for main rotational abilities. Why could, for example, priests not have multiple options for the colouring of their spells? Inscription is one of those professions that often feels a bit left behind of late, and revitalising interests of glyphs could help them a lot. I also feel that currently there's not much in-game to tell newer players that glyphs even exist, so as part of that pass I'd definitely like to see them do a bit more to make it a bit more visible that you have that as an option. At number 6 we have class skins. This is an idea that's been much discussed of late in the community with the arrival of the new hero talents, but the idea with class skins isn't necessarily that we get new abilities, but essentially we get complete new looks for our existing abilities. 
For example, you could have paladins following alternate religions and using different looking abilities, like perhaps a loon paladins using silver instead of gold. And of course, the quintessential example of class skins is the Dark Ranger Hunters, which could perhaps use Banshee themed abilities. Now, I will admit this will be a difficult to introduce now that we have hero talents which are using some of the names that you'd likely want to use for class skins. But as this video is about blue sky, we're going to ignore that problem for now. I'm sure that if we ever do get class skins, there'll be a solution that the designers will come up with for it. Moving on to number five, we have mount equipment. But, well, yeah, we already have that, right? Now, mount equipment was introduced in BFA patch 8.2.0. When I first heard about it, I thought it was quite an exciting thing, but sadly that excitement fell off a lot when I discovered that they were removing water working for the Strider mounts and making the equipment that we just bought from Nat Pago. And this turned out to be the reality of this feature for many. We simply bought our water shoes or maybe barding so you didn't get dismounted if that was more important to you. We put it in the slot and then we promptly forget about it. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a lot of players out there who don't even have equipment in that slot. And that's the issue with the feature at the moment. Mount equipment offers relatively little currently to excite or to make us want to swap equipment about very much. Which is really is a shame because this feature could be awesome with a fresh pass and some new options being added. For example, how about cosmetic options like saddle blankets or visible saddles for non-dragon riding mounts? Now, of course, that's going to be hard with the diverse mount shapes, but why limit ourselves to one slot fits all mounts? How about having different mounts having their own individual customizations dedicated to a given mount family for perhaps? In fact, we could keep the current character wide slot and then have a second slot that works on a per mount basis so you could swap in different things for different mounts. And of course, we don't have to stop with customization. How about giving our existing drakes the ability to breathe fire? You could integrate that into aerial quests even. Or what about saddle lights that can brighten up caves enough that we'd be able to mount up and ride about in them? When my paladin sheathes her sword, it just kind of clings to her belt, almost like she has a magnetic clip. But what if we could have the option for customizable cosmetic scabbards for our weapons? And I'm sure hunters would love to have customizable quivers or even bandoliers if they prefer guns. And of course, if we're adding extra slots like that, the big one for me would be the option to have separate slots for spectacles from our helms. I mean, why can't we wear our shades under our helmets currently? Other options could be the ability to have cloaks under our back plots. And, and what about having winter cloaks that go over our armor? We could even have different coat slots for different climates, which change automatically with the zones as we move about the world. Okay, at number three, we have cosmetic assistance. Now, what do I mean by a cosmetic assistant? Well, over the years, our bag sizes have increased a lot and there's no way those backpacks could ever carry all the contents of the bags that our characters actually have. And honestly, our mounts must be getting pretty tired carrying all that stuff around with us. So how about a cosmetic pack horse that followed us about in the ground and outdoor areas? It could wait faithfully for us at entrances to caves and the like, and maybe when we take to the air, they could do something in-game that gives the impression of a kit being shipped to a new destination. Like, maybe local towns could have a postmaster that would walk our pack horse over to us on arrival. Now, these would be completely optional, and they wouldn't actually change our bag slots, it just provides another thing to collect and customize while also helping to add a bit more of an RPG flavor to the game. Number two, customizable warbands. With the War Within, we'll be getting warbands, a new feature that's broadly described as account-wide everything. Now, one of the mock-ups we've seen was a new loading scheme where a selection, I think it was five of our characters were shown sitting around a campfire together. Now, Blizzard have been a bit coy about how customizable that screen will be, but the overall impression I've got is that we might be able to choose the five characters, but we probably won't be able to choose the background. But what if we could customize that background? And if we cannot choose the characters, you know, let me tell you, people will be pretty angry about that. But why be limited just by the loading screen? Why not have customizable campsites where we could summon our alts to come and join us for a rest? And you know what? How about having our alts as full companions? 
The game already supports followers. I mean, back in Legion, I loved having Archmage Madeira accompany my then Mage main around in World Quest. But imagine if that follower is one of her own alts, one that you've spent almost as much care and time on as your main. And what if they could level up with you as they help you? You could actually end up leveling two characters at once. Now, how cool would that be? And number one, of course, a video like this isn't complete without the ultimate customization tool. You know what it is, player housing. Whenever I play a game that has player housing that's not super inaccessible, it's one of the first side content options that I'll engage with. In any RPG game, there's something kind of cool, at least certainly to me, I've been able to take my character home for the night before I log out, and I will quite happily tinker for hours setting out furniture and decorating the insides of that space. And it's the latter that leads me to not really feel like the garrison hit that mark. The garrison was more about gameplay than customization overall. That said, even though I didn't start WoW until Legion, my main does actually have a fully kitted out garrison and I do appreciate being able to drop by it quite regularly. It's just that knowing that that garrison is in an alternate reality and world means that it just doesn't really make it feel like home to me. And I don't know if you know what I mean when I say that, but it's not really the default place that I'd want to send my character to, which is, is a big shame. Now, the coolest thing about player housing for me, though, is the range of new options that opens up for the rewards. Furniture, decorations, dye, utility, for example. And we could even get new professions out of it, like carpentry or decoration. And there's also a ton of social options that would open up. In Final Fantasy XIV, for example, house party events and even folks offering interior design are very much a thing. But this is probably the hardest thing for the team to actually deliver on. Ian said in response to one interview that it could cost an entire raid tier to give us player housing. And that's kind of believable given the word garrison in the way that we never did see the proposed Shatras raid in that expansion. Sure, this is a feature that would involve a huge investment for Blizzard, but I genuinely believe that effort would be repaid many times over in terms of player engagement. Sure, player housing isn't for everyone, but the folks who want it would definitely eat it up if we ever got it in-game. Well, that's my pick for the top 10 new or expanded customization features that I'd like to see added in the upcoming World Soul Saga expansions. But what about you? What customizations do you think the game is missing? Or do you think that adding more mount equipment would be the worst thing ever? Do let me know in the comments below. If you found this video interesting, there's going to be plenty more like this along with news, reviews and opinions soon. The best way to support the channel is to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to be notified when a new video goes live, do hit the bell icon. And please also do hit the like icon to let me and YouTube know that I'm on the right track. That's all for now and I will see you all again soon.